All right, it's Hot 97, number one for hip hop. It's TT Torres, and I'm so excited to have my special guest on the show today, Teslin Figaro. Did I pronounce your last name correctly? You did. You did. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm so excited to have you on the show, and here's why. I discovered your page via social media through our hip-hop community and colleagues. We have um, uh, the same friends through um, our colleagues in the industry, and I said to myself when I started following you, wow, how come I didn't discover her earlier? Because she is saying exactly how I feel. And there hasn't been anyone in the media to describe exactly how I feel. And here's this black woman on television. And I admire you for going on like the most, like hardest news outlets, like Fox, Fox News, taking on these Republicans head on, telling it like it is and articulating exactly how some of us really feel and no holding bars. And not only that, I admire the work. So I started digging in deeper and deeper. And I'm like, I admire all the social work that you've been doing for so many years. And also not to mention, you've been doing a lot of work with George Floyd's family. You've been at the funeral, you've been at all the memorial services, and I know you're just tired. And I've been like, please come on my show. I want to speak to you. So first of all, how are you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much. I'm really humbled by what you said. Uh, a lot of people do not know what I do and, and haven't uh, been aware of me. And that's okay. It's been about the work, not about the publicity, but being about the passion uh, and more about the purpose opposed to the publicity. So thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to speak to your viewers. My most important community uh, is the hip hop community always has been. I started an organization years and years ago, our movement, if you will, called Concrete Roots. And what that was about was really taking politics beyond beyond grassroots and getting down to the concrete. It was inspired by Tupac's vision when he said the roads that grew from concrete, his vision of really bringing the streets and hip hop into the political fold and being action, uh, having real action items to that. So I appreciate you having me here today. I'm doing fine. I don't want to take time up with me, but more so about what it is we can do to move forward. Uh, so again, I have uh, really been living in Tupac's spirit with saying, how do we do more than just commentate, but also participate? So yeah. I participate head on with the families, uh, whether it's the Floyd family, whether it's been the Monroe Bird family, whether it's been the Hoss Cult race. I work with uh, Attorney Benjamin Crump. He's my client. Uh, I work with him with several on several cases, uh, but he's not the only one. There's been numerous yeah. other clients that I have had that I've worked with, and you are absolutely right. I have had the opportunity to be on Fox News, which a lot of folks do not like. Uh, work with Attorney Crump, and everybody's not a fan of Attorney Crump either, and still uh, can work with the progressive side uh, as well. Uh, in the past, working with Senator Nina Turner, working with Killer Mike, all three of those folks, if you just use, if you look at them and, and what they represent, the left wing, the right wing, uh, the Benjamin Crump, the, what people, some people call him a black nationalist um, because yeah. of the, the Black Lives Matter. All of those people are very different but I've remained consistently myself through, yeah. throughout all of those relationships. Yeah. You know, um, I know a lot of politicians like to put names to what you are, right? But people in the hood, they don't really have names. They just go by how they feel. You right, know what right, I mean? Right. And it's, it's so weird because when you look at how a lot of politicians like to describe their parties and such and such, and uh, when you talk to regular everyday folks that come from where I come from, they just talk about how they feel, right, you know what right. I mean? And I think for most black folks, and we have this conversation a lot, we've always been taught um, to vote Democrat, right? Because it's been generationally put into our brains that this is the party for you. Mm -hmm. And then as we get older, we start, to, we start to discover and we start to research. And I think too, the younger generation, who, we are the ones now that are making our own decisions versus what our parents have taught us. We are the ones that are saying, hey, I don't know if I'm identifying with what this party represents for me. You know, like, I am i don't know if I'm feeling this anymore. You know, like, maybe what a Democrat have uh, identified with you, mom, doesn't necessarily identify with me anymore. And I'm kind of in that kind of space now 
You know what I mean? And I think that um, when I listen to you and I hear you articulate some of the things that you do, that's my spirit animal. You are my spirit animal. And I think when you put things in context, it makes sense for a lot of people. You know what I mean? Especially younger Black Americans. Yeah, for sure. You know, people want real recognized real. We all know that, you know, commentators can get on TV and talk about how they're so connected to the Black community and Black this and Black that. But at the end, when you really start getting down to the, what I call the concrete roots, people from the streets, not just because grassroots are your organizations, your NAACP, your Urban League, and no shade to them, but they're grassroots organizations. I really focus on the concrete roots, the streets, where you understand what it is I'm saying. I can, I understand you, you understand me. And it really is straight shot, no chaser. That's why I call my commentary straight chat notation. I don't believe in being a Democrat. I don't believe in being in a uh, uh, Republican. I believe in being an independent and having your independent voice. And until more black people, and I'm being very clear when I say black, become independent, we will not be able to leverage our vote. I say that because over 90% of black people vote Democrat. The Hispanic community, pretty much they even out their vote. They have a uh, good, good power, uh, share structure, power share between the Democrat and the Republican party and also independent. And a perfect example was the when Bernie Sanders, uh, the, the recent primary. In Florida, Hispanics uh, voted overwhelmingly for Joe Biden. In California, Hispanics overwhelmingly voted for Bernie Sanders, where Black people all across the country overwhelmingly voted for Joe Biden. And when I say overwhelmingly, I mean overwhelmingly beat like, you know, he beat, he beat, he beat Bernie Sanders, uh, beat the brakes off of him with over 70, 80, 90 percent of that vote. So my thing is not getting caught up in the politician, but really getting caught up in the policy and and we hear a lot of you know i always and when we have more time i would love to come back and talk about the common thread between pimps politicians and pastors there's a real common thread <laughs> between how they articulate and how they they move you through yeah. your emotion and allows you to get out get your thinking off the policy but see th this is the time now in my opinion and this is really why i wanted you to have the to, to come on the show today because this is the time now and i know we are stuck with the lesser of two evils yeah. but this is the wake-up call in my opinion that black folks needed because we have to look at policy we need to look at reform and i know you have been um with the family of of george floyd and i know that you see firsthand the hurt that this family is going through and not just this family but all the families that you've been working with mm -hmm. and the pain that these families have been going through for many many years mm -hmm. and if we don't collectively leverage our vote to, for real change not just noise real change because you know there, the, everybody's saying on TV, there's no leaders, there's no leaders. See, this is not a 1960s um, uh, movement where you're gonna, where you see old school style uh, marching and, and stuff like that. This is a new way of doing things. Mm -hmm. You know, you have social media, you have all of these things. So a lot of people can't put into context what's happening, right? right, right. But, but at the same time, you know, uh, these politicians are going to super serve who they vote, who votes for them. That's right. You know, right. it's very similar. And I, I give people basic analogies that they can understand. You know, politics is very clear that you're going to be the side chick or you're going to be the main chick. It's that simple. Everybody understands, especially our hip hop listeners, understand what the side chick gets out of the deal and what the main chick gets out of the deal. There's some side chicks that, that are just happy when you show up. Uh, they're happy to see you after the club when you stop by every now and then, which is the same when we look at our votes when people stop by every four years and, and run game on us and whisper in our ear and tell us all the things we need to hear and give us what I call the political reach around, which is screwing me from the back but making me feel good from the front. I'm being very blunt for your listeners to understand what it is I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The side chick uh, can either be comfortable with that and, and be okay and, and every now and then get a little money for a hair and get a little money to pay an electric bill. But the main chick is going to require more of an investment. The main chick is going to require that you put that I get on your insurance policy. The main chick is going to require that you have life insurance. So in case something happens to you, I'll be okay and my, up, and my kids will be okay. The main chick is going to require that we get a house together. The main chick is going to require that we get a car together. And even though that guy or that man or that female 
Are you talking about side chick, side man, male, female? I'm not making it about genders. But even though that, that the, the person that they love may still do what they do, there is an understanding. There is an understanding that what my investment is, uh, I expect that to be reciprocal and I respect to be, I expect to be respected as such. We have failed in having that understanding. We have gotten so caught up in being the side chick that we forgot that we are the main chick. We are the main chick when it comes to the Democrat party. We are the main ones that go to the polls. We are the main ones that advocate. We are the main ones that suffer the most. And so until we start getting in our main chick mentality and understanding that me asking for more does not mean that I am supporting Trump, does not mean that I'm supporting a Republican. It means that I didn't sleep with a Republican last night. I did not marry a Republican. The Republican didn't stop by my house last night after the club and get some and go. The Republican didn't come and ask me to have their baby. The Democrat party did. That is my husband. That is my man. That is who has constantly used me for their benefit. And this is a negotiation time. And now is more important than any other time because now we're at the table. So for those who are scared to continue to push to ask for a better black agenda, it doesn't mean people say, oh, Lord, what, we can't have Trump be in because you're scared of what he do on Twitter. This is not the time to worry about Sally Sue's husband, who is Trump. This is the time to worry about our husband, our man, the Democrat Party, and to demand more. And if the Democrat Party loves us the way that they say that they do, then you should be willing to do like the old blues song says, put it on paper. Yeah, yeah. And that requires systemic uh, racism being addressed in this country, Correct. social and economic change in this country, um, prison reform, um, because we, they talk about prison and policy reform, but that it never gets reformed. You know, we talk about massive job loss. We talk about no health care. Like these are things that um, we continue to see. If we look back in 08, you know, when, when the job, uh, the middle class just kept getting pushed and pushed into poverty. Like this was just a, a boiling point. This was a tipping point for most people. And a lot of issue is, uh, TT, is we are afraid to call out our own. You know, when I'm talking to, I, I, I talk to a lot of G's in the hood and I break down how politics is organized exactly like, like games. You know, you got OGs, YGs, BGs. In the game culture, and, and I'm using that as an example because I really want people to pick up what I'm sitting down. In the game culture, uh, even a G can be what they call disciplined. Even a G can be corrected because what you're not going to do is represent that gang or that, and wear that flag if you are not representative of what that gang stands for. And so the first people in the gang culture to discipline uh, is their G's that discipline themselves. They check themselves before they wreck themselves. When I say that politics is just like gangs, I tell people all the time, I can explain it to you real clear. Democrats are blue, they're just like Crips. They are the majority. Republicans are red, just like bloods. They are the minority. Why is it in LA in the big turf that you can have bloods dominated area yet being the minority, and I'm going and I'm using back in the in the 90s when I use this example, the minority in Inglewood dominate their area with Crips, nothing but Crips surrounding it. That is the same as what you have in Congress, in the Senate, and in the House. You can still be a minority and still dominate. How do you dominate? You hold the line, you push the line, and you check your G's when they need to be checked. So for example, Senator Amy Klobuchar, see we get so focused on what they doing, what the other hood is doing, what the, what the, the side, the other husband is doing, what the other gang is doing we don't check our own let's look at senator amy klobuchar who had an opportunity to to discipline this officer multiple times when we look at uh in the george floyd case she did not now when i was sitting i called her out on fox news and was sitting directly across from her in at, at the funeral she was on the other wow. side of the aisle and and, see, and, and and she ran on a democratic ticket let's not correct. forget and that's she got correct. it to be the Biden. next vice president of the united states and so when we get so caught up on what we don't like about Trump, that's fine. Don't like him. Call him a racist. Do whatever you feel you need to do in your spirit to do. But did you take any time to recognize what Amy Klobuchar did, who's running on our ticket, who's saying she's our OG, who's saying that she's a leader within our community, who has the audacity to come to the funeral to the man that was murdered by the man that you should have had in check. See, these are, see, you would never do that in the hood. But you that's, would never that's do it rocking us to sleep. That yeah, is that's rocking it. That's it. us to sleep. That's it. We as black folks got to stop being rock to sleep. That's right. And 
that's what I hope this awakening is. I that's that's what I am praying this awakening is that we more now than ever have to wake up and stay united. Well, let me tell you something. Your prayer has already been answered. 2020 is, uh, it's not 2020 just for any reason. Uh, it's 2020 because it is perfect vision. It is discernment. Things will be exposed. Your eyes will be open. You will see what you don't want to see. You will, just like we look at Joe Biden's background. A lot of people say, oh, wow, I didn't know he had this background. He had the same background when he ran as vice president, when he was on the vice president ticket. You just didn't look at it. So see, what God is tired of, he's tired of the games, and he's tired of the games with the least of these. And that is why you can take someone like George Floyd, who people do not believe because of what they say about his background, do not believe that he should get uh, the, the recognition that his life should not matter. See, it's forcing people to say that the least of these matter and that we have to treat the same people that are the least of these that come from where I come from with the same type of respect and dignity that we treat others. So this is an economic issue that we're dealing with. This is a class issue that we're dealing with with George Floyd. I'm getting ready to do a series of podcast series on this entire thing. And I hope I can share that with you to share with your listeners, but it is going to break down all of the different elements because we got to talk about it, family. We got to talk about it for what it is. You have social class, classism within black folks. You have, you have racism for sure that you have. You have economic, again, black folks here, here and, and, and other black folks here. So we have some inner things that we need to discuss as a family. We have some political issues and we got to get down to family business. And that is why George Floyd's case is lifted up for us to pay attention and his background, to include his background, because yeah. you have to get in such an uncomfortable place that you understand that God's children, no matter who they are and what they did, still have the dignity of life. And now it's forcing you to look on your timeline and see who's really real. Because see, all of us got a cousin like George Floyd. Let's just yeah. keep it honest. Yeah. Now, whether you wanted to acknowledge that cousin or not is on you, but you got a cousin like George Floyd. Let's just be honest. Yeah. If, if it's not a six degrees of separation from a cousin like George Floyd. Yeah. So now it's questioning you and pricking your conscience to yeah. see who you really are and where you stand. Yeah. I know it was an incredible amount of pressure for the family because you kept hearing um, the media um, put pressure on the family to keep the protests. Um, Calm and here in New York, what really disturbed me is that they used his brother um, to to stand next to the um, commissioner to ask for peaceful protest. And I, I see all of these political pawns, and I pay attention a lot to what's going on. And it, it it hurt me because this is a time where honestly they should be grieving, you know. Right. And I can't imagine the incredible amount of pressure um, that they must feel to not only grieve but also to say the right thing, That's what right. not to say, what, you know, would That's they right. words be taken out of context That's right. because, you know, they can't afford to make a mistake and say something out of context because that one thing could be taken and who, Oh, right. here we go. This right, is right. why his, his, you know, his murder is in, you know, anything, you know right. how the media is, right. especially That's when right. it comes to us, That's right. will be downplayed. That's right. And so, you know, I found that to be just, mind-boggling in, in, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a, manip a manipulation game. I said it even on Fox News that how dare any journalist, you know, continue to ask them, how do you feel about the protest? How do you feel? Should it be peace? Should it not be peace? It is not this family's job or any other family that has been affected by this to clean up America's mess. And let me go even further. It's not the job of any black person to clean up America's mess. We are not, uh, in the words of Betty Wright, rest in peace, the clean up woman. See, this goes back to, they keep trying to put us in the side chick and clean up woman and come back and, and those who, I, I love using music, so they gotta roll with me. I love using music, I love using hip hop. So you gotta just follow me <laughs> on my analogies. But it is not our job to be the clean up woman for the mess that America's put in place. You mentioned, you know, where are the leaders, where are the leaders, and you said it's a different time, but let me explain to you, sis, the reason why they can't find no leaders because don't nobody want to listen to shit the leaders have to say is, excuse my friends, I guess y'all can beef it out later. Nobody want to, the leaders have got, they have no more power. They have no more clout. It's a reason for that. So yes, there's a new way of organizing, but also leadership has completely dropped the ball. They should be marching in the streets with signs that saying, we failed, we failed you. Not just the police department, but our leaders failed failed us because you were too busy worried about going to the gala. I did a poem in 2014 called Blackout 2016. And it was about, it was after Mike Brown and I had lyrics in there and I said, 
Martin Brown Garner, Signs Coming Three. Read the Bible for yourself. You don't have to believe me. It breaks down everything that we talked about. I talk about the 92 riots, how they were our black militia. I talked about how we got sold on them, on them food stamps and on that hope, and it was just more hope, like dope, like a dope thing. I encourage people because I'm a spoken word artist. I broke this down years ago, and I'm not the only one. So when I sit back now and watch Cain and Abel, because this is, in my poem, I talk about you Cain and we Abel. You got crumbs when you was finally at the table. See, this is all the stuff that's being exposed. It brings chills to my, to my spirit and to my, to my skin right now as we speak, because now we are forced to watch. And I say, sit back and watch and continue to watch through this year and see how people move. See, Trump, if, you know why people are really uncomfortable with Trump? You know why white liberals who are really, uh, racist but have been hiding their racism for so long see trump exposes it in a way that makes them uncomfortable because mm -hmm. now it makes them have to say I, I see people that i've worked with in orlando that's my political stomping ground little things of people that we we were supporting little comments why it always got to be about race and what about black on black crime see trump makes he, he brings it out of them that mm -hmm. is a lot of fear to people where they say oh he's he's waking up all the races oh no no why do you want him to be asleep let's wake everybody up let's yeah. wake up the races let's wake up the nationalists let's wake mm -hmm. up the woke this goes the same on the black folk side wake them up wake up the weak Wake up the strong so we can divide it down the middle like Moses did and decide who's going to be left yeah. here to die yeah. in, on this side of, 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 the, of the aisle and who's going to go over to the promised land. And because, that's, that's where we're at. Because it, it gives the opportunity to dismantle the whole system and yeah. really yeah. Get a party in there that works for the oppressed, whether you brown, black, yellow, white, Give the other parties hell and make the system really work for the people it's supposed to work for. Right. Because if you are poor in America, if you are oppressed in America, that doesn't have a fit. That does, that's you poor. You know what I mean? You're poor in America. Mm -hmm. And we've been seeing that gap for, for, for a long time. That's right. And I think this awakening, girl, is like no other. I just sit back on TV and I just watch. And it's needed. And 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 as we, I, I want this message to be clear. Tell folks, stop being afraid of being woke up. Stop being afraid. Experience this in real time. You are seeing your leaders fold in real time. You, you're seeing them lose power in real time. The question is, are you going to pick it up? Are you going to pick up the mantle and continue on? This is shaping into, into new ideas, new conversations, new policies, and also new leaders. They're, they're always, even when I talk about in the streets, people say, you know, we don't have no leaders. Okay, well, at some point, there got to be, just like in, in gang culture, you got to have an OG, you got to have a YG. But there are gotta, leaders. Yeah. There are yeah. leaders. Yeah. But that's so, what I'm saying. You get on television. And you see people say there are no leaders. There are leaders. Right. You well, guys we just don't know about them. There you go. There you go. Because they've been busy on the streets. Yes. So we always have to have, but everybody has a role and position that we play. And everybody moves, you know, in a different way. But our old leaders, and respect to them, we, we, we pay homage. We respect. Us asking for new leadership to come in doesn't mean that we discount what you've done. It means that it's time to shift and move over. Again, in the gang culture, you got OGs, triple OGs that are not active. They're not on the front line. I'm going to do a show with them. I know homies that's been down, that's been in the bloods and crips for 30, 40 years. They're not active. They're not out on the street. They're not uh, gang banging. They're not shooting nobody or doing, they just sitting back. So you have active and you have people who, have, who are the uh, retired, even in the gang culture. So even in politics, that space at some point you have to move on and allow the active ones the ones who are out there on the streets who are out there doing the work to have more of a voice but guess what before we go because i know we're wrapping up we done asking this is about take it at this point yeah ain't no more asking yeah. i tell people all the time don't ask take it yeah. if white folks don't want to be your ally stop begging stop looking for allies stand on your own you either are or you're not. You either in or you are. You either for us or you against us. Same thing when it comes to black leadership. No begging, just bossing. We're yeah. either moving forward or we're not. Leave yeah. them on the Titanic to sink. Get yeah. on that boat like Rose did. 
and yeah. take your ass on over to to, to a better yeah. place. Yeah. We ain't waiting on Jack. We yeah. got to move on over because you waiting on Jack and the Titanic, you're going to drown. Yeah. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking, I'm not coming back and getting nobody like Harriet Tubman. I appreciate the Harriet Tubman to the world, but I'm going to honk the horn one time. You either moving over now or, you, or you're not. Because, because what the time I is the, now. That's it. The time is now. What I know about the streets, there's two things that a scary person that, that'll happen when you got somebody scary on your team. They'll either get you killed or they'll get you locked up. So we ain't waiting. I'm not waiting on nobody. So those who want to ride with me, we riding. We honking the horn and we moving. And we're going to leave you right here on this side of, of the of yeah. the land. And we're going on over to the promised land like yeah. Joshua. Yeah. I know you got to go. And I want you back. I want you back again. Because like I said, you are amazing. I've been watching for a distance. And you are the only one that has been able to sum up my feelings on television that I can actually say, damn, she's speaking how I really feel. You, um, I want to just ask you really quickly. Um, you've been um, at, uh, you've been close to George, George's family. Um, I'm sure um, they have been feeling the love and, and, and what everybody um, has been um, sending them all across the world. I know yes, that, yes, that yes. they can feel that energy. Yes. Um, there's another service today, correct? Uh, tomorrow. There tomorrow. is a public viewing, uh, and then the actual funeral uh, will be on Tuesday. And yes, and let me just say, and I don't <clears throat> project to be their spokesperson, uh, but I have been with them from Tuesday on every single day. We just flew in last night uh, back into Houston. If anybody has ever met anybody from Houston, they know that when you meet people in Houston, you've never met a stranger. Uh, this is the most loving, embracing, I call them my cousins, uh, you know, family that you could ever, ever meet. And yes, it has been overwhelming uh, to get uh, so much, you know, this is not like your regular home going that you just get a chance to uh, grieve in peace. The world is literally watching, uh, but they are so grateful for all of the support and all of the condolences and watching how people have really uh, been, been moved uh, by what happened. And it's not because we never saw this on tape before, because we've saw this on tape. Mm -hmm. It is because this is 2020 and their loved one is, is being, uh, is, is being, I won't say is an example of what God has always tried to get us to see. And I, I don't say that to those, I know everybody is not religion and may not serve, but whatever, whatever you believe in, whatever God you serve, whatever the most high, whatever, being you believe in, or if you believe just in a higher power of what we call karma, mm -hmm. their loved one is, is really going to be, I believe, that change because it is the perfect storm of everything that we have been talking about for the last 400 plus years. And it's on us, TT, to continue to make sure we're on the mic and continue to make sure we're pushing and to continue challenging. It is really on us. It's not on this family to do it by themselves. It's not on the protesters. It's not on the politicians. It is on us. And so this is why I hope we continue this conversation and continue this dialogue and to continue encouraging people to keep pushing. Don't think that a share doesn't matter. Don't think that a tweet doesn't matter. Don't think that, you know, using your voice in any, any, any way that you can doesn't matter because it does. Yeah. And when you get exhausted, because some days I feel like, am I doing too much? You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And um, you can feel exhausted and overwhelmed. But when you feel like you at that moment, do a little bit more. Yep. That's right. Do a little bit more. That's right. And um, you think for your children's children. That's right. And do a little bit more. So right. I appreciate you so much for coming on, Taz. I, I have Thank to have you. you back. Keep fighting, girl. You on that concrete jungle. Thank you. Yeah, concrete roots. Everybody know concrete roots down to the concrete. Once we wake up, the streets is over with. And I believe the streets have been woken up. Exactly. Give everybody an Instagram so they can keep up with you and they can follow you. Yes, ma'am. Tesla Figaro, T-E-Z-L-Y-N-F-I-G-A-R-O. Cross the T, dot the I, I am, dot the I and Figaro. I am the same no matter what. Straight shot, no <laughs> Chase the commentary. You can find that name under uh, Instagram as well as Twitter. We need more active warriors on Twitter too. I want to say that uh, Instagram to me is anti-info. I can't share links with you. I can't share uh, information. Twi Instagram has us in this space of just looking at videos and pictures, but yeah. we need to be sharing information. information. Notice Instagram only allows you to share one link at a time in your bio. Yeah, and we can talk about that. The 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 the, the sub what that is saying about our subconscious. It's yeah. more than just videos and pictures. We need you on Twitter as well because that's where we can share links and information and and receipts is what I call. So I need folks moving over to the Twitter. Most of my Twitter folks, people that follow me, are mostly people who have followed me from Fox News for the right or wrong reason. I need my folks on Twitter. 
so we can have those those arguments and those debates. Twitter is the only space that allows it to happen, not on Instagram. Okay, so Twitter, Twitter, make sure you follow her. Yes, thank yes. you so much, Thank and you, um, be safe, okay? Thank you so much. All right.